Street May Lover is 2016 and there's lots of things that stopped this year. The television channel BBC3, the newspaper The Independent, the massive boot HMS Illustrious and Cheese Chase. Oh, Brexit. Oh no, you guys. It is 2016 and you thought it's completely escaped the cold. But look where Chacho is. He's over by Cheese Chase. And you know what that means. We can't say that for much longer because this is the replacement for it. And yeah, the final years of the series, you know, the ones between 2010 and 2024, full of absolutely brutal decisions. And no, this isn't even the worst of them to come, but this is definitely up there. And mind you, this is literally the worst kept secret of the series. This has been foreshadowed since the 60s. And yeah, this is one of those grotesque decisions that the park of this nature would have made. They've got no room to put what they want, where they want. And this is the only place they can do it, realistically speaking, into the lake. And of course it was going to be a dive coaster. I don't know why you're surprised. <laughs> but look at how grotesque it is. Like it just intrudes into the lake. Such a beautiful spot. It's absolutely ruined. It's This is the Lido all over again. You know, like when we replace the Lido with the building. <laughs> this is that kind of vibe. But I can't wait for this to be done. It's going to be so cool. So this is the tour. We've got the station. And then uh, from here, it's basically Oblivion Black Hole. You go up the lift hill. You go around the bend into the uh, holding brake. And then into a drop, into a Kraken style splashdown effect. It's not going to be uh, a physical effect, so it won't slow the train down. It will be a special effect like the swarm. So we're going to go into that. And then into an Immelman, which is actually profiled the other way around. Normally my Immelmans go uh, up this way and then they do almost like a sidewinder and come out that way. Um, but I've actually rolled it the other way. I rolled it the same as Krakens and it totally 100% works. Like, I'm here for it. Uh, and then it comes into an airtime hill and then into an overbank to turn around into a 0G roll, uh, which is there. And then it comes into what I think is going to be a bend that needs reprofiling. But at the moment, it's a bend, an airtime hill, the final bend, which cuts really, really closely here. This is exactly what I wanted for this, right? I wanted to squeeze this into this space and this is exactly as I wanted this to be. I need Need to replace the supports and stuff. I need to make that make sense. Uh, but yeah, that's just, that's spot on positioning where I wanted it to be. And then it goes into the final zero G roll, and then it hits the brake one. And does it hit the brake one a little bit too hot? Yes, it absolutely does. Does Oblivion Black Hole? Yeah, absolutely. So it is what it is. <laughs> uh, yes. Now, what does that mean for the area? Well, of course, we need to say goodbye to Cheese Chase. Uh, so bye, 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 my friend. Um, we need to say goodbye to the merry-go-round. We're going to need to say goodbye to the Dodgems, uh, and I'm going to need to kit out this uh, this area. It's going to be um, uh, like uh, surf themed like hang time at Knott's Berry Farm. So it's going to be a couple of new buildings and a couple of styles. Do you know what? It's easier just to show you. See you in a minute. Guys, 
this was an awful lot of work for something that I'm not entirely sold on. And you guys are going to pick up on this as I'm going through this middle part of the episode. But hey, I don't love it. I don't hate it. I kind of wish Cheese Chase was still here and I put this elsewhere. But do you know what? This is supposed to be grotesque. It's supposed to be an awkward edition. And I think it's achieving that quite nicely. And like I say, my commentary is going to definitely give you the impression that I'm really, really uncomfortable with this build. And that's partly because I am so far out of my comfort zone when it comes to design style. This is what I'm going for here. This does have an official name. I have forgotten what it is. And I'm not going to go back and look and re-record this section. We're just going to call it the Southern Californian Surf Style, right? That's just what we're going to go for here. It's all about beach shacks. It's all about the blues, the yellows, the whites. Uh, and the, the like the pastel sea type colours. Now, there is just some stuff that's bothering me and I can't quite put my finger on it. I think it might be the colour of the coaster. The supports, I think, need to change. I don't think they should be pink anymore. Um, I, I don't know. I just don't know. I'll need to see and, and play it out. But anyway, this is the design style that I'm going for. I'm all right with this shape of building. I wanted to pull myself out of my comfort zone and do something completely different. And that's what we're going for here. So that's why we've got this like this roofing technique here. And we've got this um, uh, like awning technique. And then this is what we're going for here. It's looking really scrappy at the moment. Uh, of course, I'm going to need to tidy it up and do what, it, what we need to do. But this is what I'm going for. Driftwood on the walls. Uh, and then we've just got the panelling and stuff down here. Different colours, different mix-up and, and, and all of that. So, yeah, I'm all right with I'm all right with this. I, I like the building shape. Um, I qu I'm quite enjoying the idea of having these two different roofs and stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's cool. And then, of course, the maintenance shed is a different style of building. It's the same, not style, sorry, different shape of building. It's the same style, but it's a completely different shape. And I'm going for um, like this idea of it being an actual fisherman's fisherman's wharf almost, where you would like the boats would come in, they put the fish, and this is where they would sell it from. So that's what I'm going for. And then on the back end, that's what it looks like on the back end. Uh, so I'm trying to hide the uh, the actual entrance way here uh, by using some fencing and stuff. Uh, and I just need to find a way of opening up this area now because this has become very, very, very enclosed. Uh, it's you know. Um, it's going to become a bit of a bottleneck, I'm sure. But the idea there, though, is that they want the park wants to push people into the ice cream shop. So that's kind of why they've closed off closed off this area. But I don't think these trees can stay. I think they need to go. Um, we're talking about opening up the area. I decided to keep the dodgeons. Yeah, I thought, do you know what? I can fit the ride around it um, because I thought I was a little bit closer to the dodgeons roof with the track here than I actually am and when I started to put the supports in I was like hmm actually maybe just maybe the dodgeons can stay we don't need to get rid of them so I've kept them and I'm kind of glad because I spent so long doing this building <laughs> I just I just didn't have the heart to get rid of it <laughs> so yeah it stays and I am pleased that it's going to stay but like I say I need to open up this area now that Cheese Chase isn't here. Uh, it doesn't need to be as enclosed as it is. So I'll probably get rid of these flower beds or I'll modify the flower beds at least. And I'll, and I'll open it up uh, open it up a little bit. Now the queue line, I, I'm i all right with this queue line. It needs to be a long queue line because it's going to be a popular coaster. Um, and you can have this design tip for free, by the way. <gasps> yes, this uh, picket fence. All you need to do is uh, have two picket fences um, aligned to the same side or to the same area and then you push one one rung to the left or right depending on what you want to choose and then you just recolor one of them and then you end up with the alternating colors that's chacho's tip for free you are welcome <laughs> but i wanted to try my hand at having different fencing styles in the queue that's why we've got four different styles now the swarm kind of does this quite nicely in the sense it mixes up the fencing and whatever. And the whole idea of the Southern Californian surf style is it's very flexible. It's very like easy going. So that's what we're going for. That's what we're going for here. So we've got the solid fence that's um, that's like a, a low fence. I wanted to use that to separate some of the queue from the main uh, from the main pathway. And of course you've got the picket fencing going on. You've got the driftwood fencing, which I wanted to use as almost don't die fencing, but not don't die fencing. Uh, and then of course you've got the, uh, the, the balcony fencing up here, which I have kind of borrowed from the uh, water coaster of last week um i kind of wanted that that consistency between the two areas because this is still a watery piratey style area so it needs to borrow some of those design styles from there but i've obviously, of course recolored it and stuff this isn't this is built bespoke this isn't the same fence but it's very 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 similar uh, and i'm i'm all right with that so coaster wise i have put in the uh, splash zone i haven't moved 
the, uh, the the boats and stuff. I need to get some advice from uh, some people that I know about the boats and whether they can just be rerouted through the course of the coaster or whether I need to completely rebuild the station, move it and stuff. So I'm going to go and seek some advice before I move it and before I commit to it. But the splashdown is in. So that's what... Oh, well, look at that. Good timing. There you go. Splashdown is in. Uh, and as it goes around the end, moment, perfect. Love it. That's absolutely spot on. And then, of course, lots of and lots of custom supporting going on. Like so much custom supporting, I almost want to be sick. <laughs> and that's why I don't want to go and change the color of the supports because I have to do each building one by one and change the colors. Anyway, if it is changing, it is changing. It's, it is what it is. But lots and lots of custom supporting going on in here, partly because this area here was just a little bit too dense and it needed thinning out and it needed proper supporting. And then the pathways and stuff actually got rid of some of the supports anyway. So they needed to be put in. And this now looks pretty decent. And it looks it looks correct and there's some interesting designs of supports actually that I found so like so there's this one there's like a, a, a what I refer to as an internal a frame uh, it's like it's like these ones but it faces inside the track because you don't have the space to put it either side uh, and then you've just got like the the V frames and all that sort of stuff so yeah, I need to uh, sort out all of the um, stuff along here, by the way. I need to go away and clear off all of the foliage that was here from Cheese Chase. Cheese Chase? Cheese Chase? And then uh, all of the stuff along here all just needs tidying up. I think I'm going to put a fence along here, uh, particularly around this area. Uh, it just feels like that, that needs to have one. And then this is the photo unit. So I make no apologies of the fact that A, it's not finished, and uh, B, it is just a copy of the invert one that's just been recolored and, and kitted out a little bit better but this is the kind of end style that I want to go for with this area you know the surfboards and stuff cluttered around and uh, of course we've got the bits over here right where are we uh, over here that I want to sort of use that same sort of style just to give a little bit of consistency so yeah this is what we're going for with the uh, with the photo units using the awesome trip tripwise font uh, again because it's just perfect for the area so uh and of course this is the perfect location for the right photo uh, right photo booth then i just need to do all the flowers and stuff in here and make it all make sense once again and then just some flower beds and stuff down here i do need to tidy up this area i do want this to be as open as this uh, i'm gonna put some flower beds in and stuff though to like to support the um to go around the supports just to give it a bit of personality and whatever so yeah and like i say i am not loving it oh i didn't show you inside here by the way uh there you go inside the maintenance shed is all pretty much done i just need to do the roofing and stuff in here i don't want this to be any more than this and i know that bns don't use actual track inside maintenance sheds but we we do in planet coast just because it represents what we're trying to represent right so uh you know what that's uh, you know what that is so yeah inside there is all pretty all pretty much done but like i say i'm not sold I don't love it i don't hate it uh, i just need to finish it basically <laughs> and if you're gonna watch this episode then you know it stays that's all i'll say anyway see you in a minute
<laughs> All right, then you guys I am ready to call it this is no longer my least favorite thing in the park <laughs> it, it took a bit of a battle. It took some time, but we got there <laughs> So let me do a real quick post-mortem by the way I figured out what it was that was bothering me and I think it's important that I tell you what that is the first one was the color of the coaster I just toyed with some different colors I know this is a copying color scheme of another coaster and stuff for the whole faded yellow with the, the slightly darker blue I get it right and it feels right now because that exists in the world somewhere else and it's comfortable it's a comfort zone but actually this makes this coaster feel right the other thing that was really bothering me and I kind of worked it out was the fact that this station is raised now I think in my head I had that this whole balcony bit and this whole station was going to be at ground level and so the fact that it's raised up and that I've got this empty space underneath meant that I was struggling with it and I didn't really know what to do with it because I couldn't make it make sense I couldn't make this whole thing make sense standing up but actually now I've put the foliage and all of the stuff in it now it now makes that's a that's a pillar. It now makes sense, right? It's is it perfect? No, it really isn't. Do I still wish I put it elsewhere? Yes, I absolutely do. <laughs> but am I happy with it being here? Yeah, I'm all right with that. So uh, there you go. I just thought I'd like let you guys know that was the post mortem. I sat here and I thought and I thought and I thought. I did toy with stopping everything putting it elsewhere but I played it on and this is what we ended up with and guys I actually dig it I put the um the concrete pillars in you know the concrete footers uh I, I was I was always, always gonna do it um but that kind of for me cemented that this needed to be here and also I've put the footers in with the uh sky ride too the chain uh the chain <laughs> the chairlift uh put that in so yes and to answer the question that I get you guys are probably gonna be burning about did the boats need to move and the answer is no it didn't uh, so there is there is a collision risk uh, with stuff here that's a thing falling off trains however there would be a risk assessment that would manage that here in the uk uh, would you need a net no you wouldn't now the guiding principle that uh, my contact told me was oblivion at alton towers operates with the path sitting right up to the uh, right up to the drop as in you can stand as close to the back of the drop of oblivion as this boat ride gets and it's operated since 1998 without incident so it's good we are good to go so i kept it as it was and i just put the new boat path around this way and it now absolutely works so i like it i didn't have to do anything any work to it i like that answer <laughs> So, let's have a look at the building then, because oh, there's, there's a lot of stuttering going on in this. I've added, well, I know what it is that I've added. It's the uh, the sign from Sentinel. Um, it's it's freaking out the game, and I just dread to think what my old PC would have been like. Um, so, this is the design of the building. I sort of cluttered it out with lots of surfy style, watery stuff, but I didn't want to make it pirate, because we've got a pirate area. So, lots of colour is needed and I thought actually you'd probably have lots of like these uh, lemonade and ice cream kind of posters it would be splattered around everywhere so that's what I've done a couple of barrels a couple of bits just to give it a bit of a nautical theme but not a pirate theme and that's what we're going for I need to remove the archer um, and yes I bought the sentinel sign back in uh, you guys seem to like the fact that we're reusing Spike's signs and do you know what I agree because Spike put so much effort into these signs that it's a shame to leave them in the episode that they were designed for and this works absolutely mwah, chef's kiss for this area this was the perfect uh, the perfect symbol you saw me put in the viper sign originally I think in the time lapse I probably would have kept that in or you would have seen shots of it in there I decided to remove the viper sign it was the wrong uh, it was the wrong color scheme Sentinel was uh, Sentinel was perfect. And yes, we do have a name. I'm sorry, guys. I've named this one. It's called Agro, uh, and that's because I needed a short name that sat in this in this, in this area. This is actually uh, an Australian slang surface a surface slang term for aggressive surfer. So that's what we're going for here. That's what this wanted. To, I wanted this whole ride to to get that vibe right. Aggressive aggressive surfing. Uh, so let's go inside. Sorry, this is all over the place. I'm and I make no apologies for this because I'm actually a little bit excited to show you all of this. Because <laughs> I think this is a design triumph. I'm pleased with the design. I'm just not pleased with. I'm not the most pleased with it. Like I've, I've, I've. 
done areas that I've liked better. But this is the station anyway. So again, this is the whole nautical. Whoops, uh, change my camera. There you go, Chacho. Uh, yeah, so this is the whole nautical theme I've got going on in here. I don't want it to be any more than this inside here. Like I could have gone all out with all sorts of stuff, but no, I decided not to. I put the row numbers and stuff in here, um, and I've put wooden flooring down. And this is this is what I think it just it just needs. That's all. That's all it needs. Uh, and then the maintenance area. Again, I've just, um, this is actually probably where I'm using it the most. Putting all of those kind of Americana style um, posters around. These are actually KPR's posters. They are so good. So, so, so good. I use them everywhere all the time. I spam them around. Um, and these are perfect for this area. Uh, I did toy with having something at the top here. Like, I don't know. I just got these visions of there like being a big wave or something going on. Maybe Spike, if you're watching, you might do me a wave or not. <laughs> but don't feel pressured. Please don't. Um... Like, that's what I kind of figured that I wanted to put in here. I did think about putting the Sentinel sign there, but it was a bit over overkill, so it's fine. But this is ultimately what I wanted. Like, this whole idea of a bit of surf clutter just to give the building a little bit of character. And then down here, uh, I have decided to do the flower beds and stuff in the same way. Lots of, uh, like, surfboard clutter and whatever. And then on the back end here, uh, I have put the Sentinel sign and then just some more surfboards and whatever. So, yeah, I dig how this area has turned out. I opened it up completely. So I got rid of all the flower beds and stuff from in front of the ice cream shop. That now feels way better than it did. Um... I, I don't know. I got a little bit obsessed when I was designing this of like enclosing the area and making it feel claustrophobic and going, oh no, this needs to have a specific set aside area. Rah! And I was like, no, I'm going to open it out and see what happens. And this happened and I'm, I'm good with it. Like you don't even need the concrete footers here, right? They would be buried underneath the pathway. So you don't need to have the, the bits sticking out. Swarm is a prime example of being able to do that. So I'm taking uh, I'm taking those cues opened around about the same time. So uh, that's kind of makes sense that that would uh, that that would be a thing. The queue line then I it's popped off right. I decided to actually extend the uh, the flat faced as I'm calling it the flat faced uh, fence along this side as well. That just finished it off. For me. I was like, yeah, do you know what? This works. Bit of foliage around just to create a bit of shade, give it a bit of personality, give it a bit of depth. Happy days, job done. And then this flower bed did exactly the same thing. Um, this turnaround here, I definitely 100% needed something to stop people congregating in this area and maybe congregating here because this is like the point of the most stress, right? As you'll see when the train's coming round, this is the point of most stress. You don't want people under it. So I put the flower beds and stuff in there and it works. Like, it really works. I love, I love how close these two get. Like, this is definitely a coaster that was squeezed right into the space that it had and i am here for it and that also applies over here as well where we've got the uh, the games unit and it just gets really really close like yes and now that i've put i didn't talk about this in the last update and i meant to now i've moved the supports and put them in like tucked into areas like you've got this one here uh, you've got this one here you've also got this one here and then you've got the two down here now that they're tucked into the most appropriate places it just feels right it feels like whoever designed this and b&m collaboratively have like come together and gone yeah, there you go. That's how you can squeeze this into this area and uh, it not feel stupid. Entirely stupid, anyway. <laughs> uh, so inside the maintenance area, by the way, that's not changed. That is what it is. All I've done is I just put the ceiling in, made it make sense. So, uh, yeah, that's all. Uh, that's all good. And then over this way, the last bit to show you is the photo unit so this hasn't changed this is uh, this is as is and uh, it now fits into this area just perfectly just nicely now that all of the path and stuff is in and all i did was i just put in a bit of concrete padding here so that you can actually get in and out of the building so you're not actually uh, fighting with anything and then all around here again i opened it out i again had visions of it being enclosed like it was in fact i'm still inclined to get rid of this one but i'm going to keep it there for now um, let's see what it is. And I'm so glad I kept the dodgems. I'm so, so, so glad. It now complements the area. It complements the build. I was stupid to even think to think to get rid of it. Um, and then this is how it looks from across the lake. So amongst a sea of stuff, we have created ourselves a B&M corner. <laughs> because <laughs> we've got the dive coaster here we've got the um uh, the sit down coaster and then of course you've got the inverted in the background so welcome to b&m corner everybody <laughs>
<laughs> there we go. There it is. Guys, thank you so much for getting to the end of the episode. I really do appreciate it as always. Please leave a like and a comment and subscribe and all the usual stuff. We're going to go for a ride. I'll see you next week. By the way, next week, that is the brutal decision. Oh my God. That's all I'm going to say. See you next week. Have a good one. Bye.